last week. Fantastic. Well, welcome everybody. It's Tech Tuesday. Uh, today is what? The 25th of January already. Um, so we are going to talk about navigating the desktop version of Shuffle today. Um, how do you, do you want to, do you, did you, I think you put an agenda out. So do you have a certain idea what we wanted to do? No, I think, you know, we can basically follow similar format uh, to what we did last week on going through mobile. Obviously, if you missed that live, you want to go check out a replay of the navigation of mobile. But we're going to talk about the same aspect. Everything you have on your mobile device for Shuffle, you're going to have access to from what we call the desktop. Um, you're not using your native applications for iOS and Android. You've actually gone into your browser and you've logged into the application. Perfect. I'm going to jump over into the demo account. And pull Literally on. logging into the demo account on my end as well, Kathy, so we can jump oh, back and forth here. Perfect. Great nice. minds. Right. Awesome. All in right. The meantime, as well, if there are any questions on usage, anything related to using the technology, this is the whole goal of Tech Tuesdays at Two with Kathy. Um, if you're trying to build out something, follow up with, you know, setting your reminders or using your contact section, any of that type of stuff, feel free to throw that down in the chat or raise your hand and we can come around as we get to question and answer and cover some of that. Absolutely, especially if it's something that you're like, hey, can we cover this on a Tech Tuesday? If there's something you guys wanna talk about either literally how to use the technology or hey, how, you know, I think, was it last time or the time before we talked about the flow of how, I send versus other people send. I mean, we all have kind of a little bit probably different ways that we do things. So the fact that there are different ways in Shuffle to do things, it's really just how you like to do it. Personal so, preference. And I, I think that's the goal, right? There's a lot of functionality baked into the technology. We know that that functionality falls into two categories. It's going to be everything related to networking or relationships, relationship management, making new relationships, all of that type of stuff. And on the other side is our marketing, right? What are we putting in front of people so that they can make an informed decision to do business with us? And we know that both of those things work hand in hand. So if you do have questions about that, if you're only leveraging one side of that coin, maybe you're focused on your marketing and you haven't leaned in on the networking side or vice versa, um, please feel free to bring that up or suggest those topics. Kathy, do you want me to share or do you want to share? On it. I'm about to share right now. I was going to say, I just did an, uh, um, I had an event yesterday with my networking group and I did an entire presentation on networking is an action word yeah. and talked about how, you know, taking the actions and a lot of the stuff that we talked about it actually, um, but taking that action of saving people's information recording information, notes, all the things that we always talk about and it was a fantastic, I mean, we had great feedback. So it was a fantastic uh, presentation to be able to give and share with, with some new networkers and some seasoned networkers, right? Because we kind of fall out of practice sometimes. So fun, fun time with that yesterday. Okay, we got our desktop open. Awesome. So you will see when you log into your desktop, if you look up at the URL, you're at app.lfi.com. You're in your card section, but that's a, a good thing to keep in mind. You can sign into this from lfishuffle.com. There's that sign in uh, page. And what it's going to take you to when you first arrive are your cards. So we talked about networking. We talked about marketing. We are straight in the marketing side of our shuffle. These are all the cards that we are creating that we want to put in front of people. So that's where you're going to see it. The big main elements that I want to call out is this upper navigation. You've got the cards, the card index, your activity, your contacts, discover channels, creating things, getting your tap cards, all the way over to notifications, like what has happened since you last came in, your chatter, and all of your profile details. So this will be somewhat reminiscent if you, were, if you joined us for the mobile overview of some of those primary five icons at the bottom. Obviously on your mobile phone, we have limited space. So the top five is still the cards, the activity, and the contacts, okay? And then your more option. So be aware of, of, of um, what you're gonna see on your desktop. We've got a little bit more real estate to work with. And you'll also see a few other things that are solely desktop specific. And Kathy, I think, um, you know, when we get to those things, it's a great opportunity to speak to why 
And the big thing with desktop is real estate. We've got, you know, a big computer monitor in front of us or a laptop monitor. It's a lot more space than we have on our mobile device. So really it's, if, if, if you're not out in the field, come work on the desktop. You don't wanna be sitting at your desk on your phone and you wanna feel that you can jump back and forth seamlessly between the two because they're gonna be in sync with each other in the you know quote unquote cloud. Um, and that's what's so great, right? There's a lot of people that like to work from their phone or maybe you need to because you're running into a meeting and you wanna make a quick change. But the fact that you know maybe all your pictures or your links are easier for you to grab on the desktop, I do actually get that question a lot. Like you show someone the app and they say, "Is can you work on this on your desktop? And they're, you're like, yeah. And they're like, that's fantastic. So I love that we have not only more features, but we have the option. And then it speaks, like you said, it speaks to one another and seamlessly updates either one. Yep. So let's take an opportunity to high level talk about each of these navigation features at the top. Obviously, we're on cards and most of you have already built cards on, on the system, but everything card or content related is going to fall under your cards. Um, if you're new to cards, the best way to think about them are like little mini landing pages. And it's just a matter of how are you using them? Are you using them as a business card, a product brochure, a lead capture form, a video landing page, some type of link hub, et cetera? Um, there's a lot of uses for cards and obviously we'll spend deeper training this year into specific uses of cards. Uh, the next area is card index. So what I love about Shuffle, and I think this is pretty powerful, card index is the cards that you're collecting from other people who use Shuffle. And this may sound sort of what, you know, right out of the gate, other people's cards. And let's talk about that networking versus the marketing side of things. And Kathy, I know you as a master networker, you know, somebody who's out there and meeting new people, forming new relationships all of the time. But also on the other side of that, people come to you because you're so connected and they're asking you, hey, do you know somebody who does X, Y, and Z? And I think this is the perfect thing for card index or what I would refer to as your deck. You know what I mean? You've got your deck of other people's cards. If it was the physical card, like we all know so well, this is my example one I always hold up, you know, you've got stacks of these sitting on your counter or in a shoebox. If they were all virtual, this would be your sort of virtual Rolodex, if you will, your card deck of everybody's cards. Yep. Yeah, and the nice thing too is, you know, and I, I've talked about this before and I'll have to pull it up sometime and show everybody, but I have on one of my PowerPoints that I, when I show off shuffle, would you rather I take a picture of this and send a static photo to somebody and go, hey, I really like this person, or do you want me to send you their live shuffle card that they curated, that they put all their links so that you can push buttons, watch videos, go to their, you know, social media, which one would you rather me share? Yeah. Right? It just makes so much more sense. Let your let your voice be the one that introduces yourself, not mine. And, and sort of in a way, I also like to think of this, um, you know, I want to empower people to refer me business. And if I make that process very simple, right? If I either say, here's my card, and we've talked about this on past Tuesdays at two, save it to your home screen or save me to your contacts. Again, if they're part of this overall LFI community and they have shuffle, they've got your card sitting right there along with all these other cards. So when that question comes to light of I need a referral and you are the referral they're thinking of, it becomes very easy for them to grab that information and send it out on your behalf. So it's just as much as you being able to empower other people to refer you business as it is about us collecting other people's cards so that we have cards available to refer when, when the time comes. And I think that's so powerful from the standpoint of just having my cards and having other people's cards to quickly grab and share. Absolutely. And we've talked about that before. I mean, you go from, from being a networker of your own business to being a connector of people. And I, that, you know, that's where the power lies. A hundred percent. And now uh, comparing this to the mobile side, you will just find that card index or your deck is going to be nested underneath the contact section in mobile. So, um, you know, you had the cards, the activity and the contacts, you click on that and up at the top, you have your contacts, your index and the uh, tags. 
So be aware of where these are in both places. It's right up front for you when you're on your desktop, uh, a little bit more nested on the mobile site due to the real estate. But something they all have in common is activity. And the activity, this is our global activity, okay? This is everything that we've done in Shuffle from a high level, whether it's editing or sharing or making cards, whether it's adding new contacts, setting up notes, setting follow-up reminders, et cetera. If you want a high level view of all the activity you've been working on, what you've done in the past, and maybe what might've happened in the system since you last logged in, activity is gonna be your go-to spot for just general information. The other thing I wanna add here is if you're working as part of a team, or a group, or maybe you're overseeing and mentoring people, activity is a great thing to pull up for accountability. It tells me that I'm taking action on things. And what you can see Kathy uh, has pulled up is you've got a search bar where you can search for activity, or you can literally go in and click on that gear and filter out the activity if you're looking for something specific, like you know maybe I have certain follow-ups I need to take care of, and I want to filter everything out and just focus on follow-ups. Or maybe it's cards that were physically opened, you know, and I can see, oh, I've got to follow up with Paul. I keep getting that reminder. I got to follow up with Jane. Man, that's my call to action to get in there and take action on the activity that's presenting itself to me. So activity is a good spot check. I always jump in there if I've got little notifications to see what's going on really quickly. Did somebody view something, etc.? Yeah, the reason I, I go to send is because of your first point. Like if I'm mentoring somebody and they're in my, say I, you know, pick a company and I, I do the same company and I'm mentoring this person yeah. and they're like, I'm just not getting any business. I'm not getting, you know, this, what, show me how many cards have you sent? Who, who are you connecting with? Are you sending one a week, one a day, yeah. two a week? You know, where are we at with the, the, the activity again, right? It's an actual word networking. Um, what actions are you taking? to fill your bucket, right? To to have business start to be generated for you. That's why I always go to send. And then yeah. again, the gears, there's always like little things to look for in different parts of, of Shuffle, just like we talked about. So you can export activities, you can export information, lots of stuff. Always just push all the buttons and see what's under what, because there, there are just different ways to do different things. And Kathy, to your point, even self-accountability and looking at the activity, whether I'm monitoring somebody else's, how many have you sent, uh, I can just as easily monitor or keep a, uh, myself accountable. How many cards did I send? And Kathy, when I think about those two areas where we're talking networking side of things and marketing side of things, when I look at the sends, I'm thinking about the outbound marketing that I'm doing. When I look at the new contacts, I'm thinking about the new relationships that I'm bringing in. So you may have set a goal for yourself. Maybe it's, I need to send out five cards today to different people. And then you, you know, get them sent out and you would see all five of those sins listed in your activity. But if you have an, uh, another goal, maybe it's, I need to get three new prospects every day. You could easily come into your activity and say, did I add three new contacts to my shuffle contacts today? Um, so, so I think this is something that from a high level, you can see all of that in one area. Uh, but what you'll see as we go through this navigation is you can filter your activity down even more, not just based on the filters in the activity section, but if you want to see activity for a specific card or for a specific individual, you can go to those areas and drill down to the activity sections within them. It will all be in here, global activity, but you can filter it down by those other sections. I think that takes us into contacts here. So much information. I love contacts. <laughs> There's a lot of information here. And we always say Shuffle's about sending the right information to the right person at the right time. And part of that is the info, right? Our cards. And the other part is person, the right person. So who... And we wanna know or answer basically five questions about every contact. And this is what Shuffle is specifically designed to do. Who are they? How do you know them? When have you interacted? What did you interact about? And when are you gonna interact again? And trying to do that in the simplest ways possible. So let's call out a little bit of the navigation stuff on here, Kathy. First thing you'll see highlighted at the top is we're looking at our list of contacts and you'll see the search bar and then the list starts going down here and we can speak to some of this navigation but i also want to call out right next to contacts at the top is tags 
So one of the quickest ways to start filtering out your contacts, if you're zeroing in and getting laser focused at doing work, I'm gonna be working on my prospects today or on my customers today. You can actually tag your contacts so that you can come in and find certain groups of contacts. Like, ah, these are ones I'm prospecting. These are existing customers. These are team members, or these are internal customers or external customers or vendors, et cetera. If you take an opportunity to label your contacts as you're working them, it's gonna make filtering them out a lot easier. So you select say something like prospects and when it brings you back to your contacts section, it will have filtered that list. And so you can see it just filters it down. There are the two maybe prospects that we are working in this demo account. Well, the nice thing to me for me is the way that I personally use my tags is to answer your first question. How do I know this person? Yeah. Right. So that's usually where, where I start my tags. I might multi-tag. So just so you guys know, you can multi-tag somebody. So yep. you can say, I know them from this networking group. They are a plumber and they are a prospect right? Or they're a customer, whatever it is. So you can put them in multiple groups and then pull up that information by any one of those three tags. In addition, if you're using campaigns and the lead capture forms, it will actually auto tag or auto apply a tag to your contacts as you're generating those leads. And this is a great way to say, oh, my fishbowl, my virtual fishbowl is gathering a lot of people or, oh, that QR code I have posted over here is getting a lot of people. Again, you want to lean into where you're getting traction at. Sorry, I thought the doorbell was going to go off. So I thought my dog was going to go crazy. Okay. So. <laughs> so the other thing I want to, I want to call out, you've got to search where you can search for people. And then like Kathy has mentioned in other areas, we've got this gear. And a gear is always an extra menu, maybe something I'm not going to use all the time, but when I need it, it's there. So be aware when you see these gears, both in mobile and desktop, that there's extra things that you can do when you see those gears. And this one is more of a sorting or filtering option for your contacts. I know some people are, you know, give it, give it to me in alphabetical order. Other people are, you know, what's the last one I looked at or the most recent one I brought in. You can filter your contacts in whatever way best suits you. And I think that's uh, the huge benefit of, of managing my contacts in Shuffle is if I'm just working the, the current ones that I'm working, I can keep those active ones right on top based on the last ones that I've viewed, et cetera. Absolutely. I like most recent. That's how I do it. Yeah. Um, and then the, the search bar, but it's also your, it's where you add from online and the desktop as well. Yep, so you can click that quick little ad. This may seem familiar to you. You saw this ad on the phone as well, right? So we can um, start to collect information, enter it in as much information as we have on that person. Again, this is who are they, right? I wanna put in as many details as I know about that person as I'm initially creating that contact. Um, and then I think on here, we might even have an ad from Google option. Again, when you're on your phone, you might have an import from your phone list. Whereas on desktop, you don't necessarily have your phone list hooked up to your computer, but you have other things that are accessible from your computer, like your Gmail address and things like that. So you're gonna have different ways uh, to pull in contacts. Absolutely, and then um, that's okay, we'll lose that. And then we can just pull open something if we want to. And do you want to talk about that sub menu? Yes. So now we're literally looking at a contact. We're getting ready to work that, that individual or, or interact with that individual, work their profile, build that dossier on them. And so what I want to do is you can see I've got that info. Who are they? Okay. I'm just going to go briefly through the top nav here. Um, the next piece is, and I'm trying to see that on your screen, Kathy. Let me move you over. Channels, I believe it is. Channels, yep. Yep, and that's if they've subscribed to anything of yours. Then you've got the activity. And again, similar to your upper activity, except for this is specific to Kent. That's it. You know what I mean? It's nobody else. It's no other cards. It's just Kent. Notes are the notes that I've taken on him. If I haven't taken a note, it's pretty easy to go in and add a note. Um, chatter is going to be any communication we've had back and forth. My shared cards are cards that I have shared with him or her. Their shared cards are going to be cards that they've shared with us. And you can see it even pops up a little menu. Do you want to request a card from that individual? 
And then finally, we're talking about follow-up reminders. And in previous trainings, we've talked about the relationship loop. This is all part of that relationship loop where we're ending every interaction with the expectation of the next interaction, setting that follow-up, logging those notes so that when the follow-up goes off, we can come back to the profile, quickly review the info, the notes, et cetera, and then have that next interaction. Absolutely, there's a lot under under context. So yeah, guys... and one thing that I think is important to call out on this, Kathy, is you can see under Kent's image, just where she uh, Kathy's moused over, there's a little shuffle icon right there. We actually have a few extra features when it's two shuffle users, two shufflers using the system together. That's where you see things like the channel and the chatters and their shared cards. If it's just the contact. They don't have cards yet to share with me. So they're not going to have a their shared card section, et cetera. So Kathy, if you scroll down a little bit on here, I think it might be uh, beneficial to click on one of these that maybe isn't a connection. And I don't know well, if I we have, I have it guys. sorted. Hold on. Only connections. <laughs> oh, yep. That's why you can't see any. There you go. So just like Jane up here or in any of these, you can see you open it up and we've lost a few of those menu items because this individual is just a contact of ours and not necessarily a social connection. So we can still see my shared cards, the info, the activities, the notes, and the follow-up reminders, just what we need to do in order to take the next action. In addition, if we maybe uh, added this contact when we were scanning business cards out at a networking event, you can see down there, there's a business card photo. So I literally still have a picture of their business card directly tied to their account. And then Kathy, if you scroll a little bit more, you sort of saw that additional data section. You can literally start recording additional information about that contact. Ultimately, as you interact with your contact from the moment you meet them, not just till the moment they purchase from you, but through their whole life cycle as a customer, you're gonna to continue to be adding details about that contact within the contact section. And then I don't know about any other ones, but I know it's under here, right? I think there's even one more sub menu is from the my cards that I can share with someone, I can also make someone a promotional card that's kind of layered, layered in here. Yeah, and what, what we all love about promotional cards is it gives them a sample of the power of Shuffle. It gives them a sample of the content capability of Shuffle. So maybe this is a new team member that just joined my team and I wanna show them what they could have if they were using this solution too. Or maybe it's an invite that I want to send to Brittany here to bring her in to become a, a Shuffle user. I can create an example and it's not necessarily gonna count against my primary content, right? My primary card count. It's uh, an addition to that that I can just share directly to this contact. And what I love about promo cards is if they enroll through that promo card, it'll automatically clone that and create a version for them to start working from. So it can actually help people get off to a, a faster start. Yep, I just wanna make sure because everybody's always like, where's that hidden again? <laughs> yep, uh, so let's talk through that one last time. We're in the contact yep. section, we've selected a contact and then under that contact, you will see my shared cards. These are things that you are sharing to your contact. One of them is gonna be your cards and the other will be promotional cards that you've created for them. So again, so much stuff packed in the shuffle, I love it. All right, are we ready to move on to Discover? Or we got anything yeah, else? Yeah, let's move on to Discover. Um, any questions so far from anybody, feel free to throw that in the chat. Otherwise, when we're talking about Discover, you saw those contacts back there that had the shuffle icon next to them. That's because it's other shufflers that we've connected with. What does that enable us to do? One, it enables us to have conversations with those people, collect cards from those people, give cards to those people, all within the application. Um, you know, and then it all also allows us to empower people to refer us business. It builds our shuffle community uh, as we work together with other individuals. So you can make public connections, you can see inbound requests. I'm sort of jumping into this. Uh, a discover menu here on the, the left hand side, uh, you can see your out, outbound request who you've requested to connect with and whether they've accepted. You can filter or go through tags and add private notes as well, but just really easy to send a request to an individual to connect with. I love it. All right, channels. 
Panel, this is a cool thing from the standpoint of if you are broadcasting or sharing information out, you don't necessarily need to be connected to people in order to subscribe to their channel. They could be sharing something, maybe it's a Monday motivational topic or inspirational topic, a quote, a training, and anybody can subscribe to those publicly available channels. So you will have your channels, so you can create your own. Maybe you have a bunch of followers who wanna get your messaging and they wanna to subscribe to your channel. Or you can go and look for publicly available channels to subscribe to, and you can do a search to find those channels within Shuffle. Again, if you're gonna to subscribe to someone or if you're gonna have a channel, you need to be a Shuffle user. Correct. I think that's a good distinction. It's all baked into this whole Shuffle network and the Shuffle ecosystem um, of, of users. Um, so do you wanna to jump to over to the rest of the menu? Yeah, let, let's finish those things because the okay. create, creating is really just the contact uh, and the connection, right? Or the contact and the content yep. of creating new stuff. The tap card is just an easy way to get your NFC technology. And we can speak to that in a little bit here too. Um, you know, this is, I truly think tap is the fastest way to share information when you're in person. If you Absolutely. know how to leverage the technology, it's literally a tap and a click to put that information on somebody's device and let them go to it. And when I right. compare- we thought, to, we thought QR codes were fast. <laughs> how we even reduce that? Yeah, and, and, and again, the right situation, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is the best use? If, if you're doing what most of us did in 2020 and only online doing everything virtually, your NFC isn't gonna be very powerful. But if you're out there all the time going to different groups, events, meetings, et cetera, it's an extremely powerful tool. So think about your situation and what you need and whether TAP is right for you. So well, let's jump back over to finishing up the top navigation here. Your bell, these are your things that have gone on in the system since you sort of last were in here, right? How many overdue follow-ups? So clearly our, our uh, account here for the demo has a few overdue follow-ups that need to be updated or addressed. And then if anybody, uh, you know, became a new lead or, you know, any uh, views you've had, et cetera, those are all gonna be alerted to you right in that alert section. They may be mirrored to some degree in the overall activity as well. But this is going to be your, hey, don't forget, or this recently happened, check it out. And that's why you'll see the little count happen on that bell. All right, this is Chatter. Chatter is an awesome bell from the standpoint of communicating. If you have uh, people you're connected with in Shuffle, and Kathy mentioned this earlier, that means you are both on the system using it together. You've got a lot of flexibility. You can talk one-to-one. -one you know, I could open up and have a conversation with anybody one-to-one. -one. Um, I can have group conversations. So think about that like a group text thread where we're all on shuffle and we're all communicating together. And then you can have what we call broadcasts. And um, Kathy, at the very bottom of this dropdown, you'll actually see see all messages. When you click on that, it's gonna take you to a whole section here of all of your messages. And just above that, sort of where we saw the contact section with the tags, you'll see a little megaphone up there. And that megaphone, right next to the search under all of your contacts, oh. is going to be your I didn't broadcast. Even know this was online. <laughs> yeah. So this is your broadcast. And broadcast is pretty cool from the standpoint of we all know what happens when two people are messaging back and forth. We all know what happens in a group thread where everybody sees everybody else's comments. But what about when I just need to blast information out to everybody or to a subset group? And if they reply back, I just want to get that reply to myself and not be a distraction to everybody else. That's when you use your broadcast. So you can broadcast to a group or a tag word. You can broadcast to specific connections, which would be all of them. You could broadcast to certain subset groups. Maybe you have a network within Shuffle that you've referred or even to specific channels that you're communicating with. So it gives you very powerful lines that you can send messaging out to. Uh, this is good for maybe you're doing a training. Hey, everybody, we're gonna be doing a training. You know, Don't forget to be here at this point at this time. You guys may have even noticed that we send out an announcement broadcast in a very similar fashion to let everybody know about these live events. 
Yeah, I've only overdone that for my mobile. So that's really, that's cool. I did not know about the megaphone. See that? I learned something today. And so again, that's going to be under the chatter section. When you click that drop down, see all messages at the bottom of that. It will actually take you to a full chat section where you'll see all those contacts that you have and where you can select to broadcast. And then our last one. Yep, the last area that you're going to find, you're going to find your whole account information stuff. So you'll see my account, you'll see a, a call to action to complete the setup of your profile. If you need access to our help system, you can get it there. Any recent announcements, including announcements for these lives, you'll find there. And then we're working on a dashboard, so I won't speak much to that. But inevitably, instead of coming to your cards, you'll come to a dashboard, and that'll help take you to some other areas. I clicked on it, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's going to be yeah, awesome. It's starting to get built out. So once yep. we get that done, you'll start to see more and more stuff come in that will give you action items to work on within Shuffle as well. And then and then the last we, one that confounds everybody. Log out. out. A little bit for log out. <laughs> yep, we're extending that. I think when we added in that dashboard, it pushed things down. And because that's in beta, we overlooked the increasing the size of that drop down. So we'll get that increased. Um, the only other thing I want to call out, Kathy, that's nested within here is if you click on my account up there, this is where all your account information is. So you want to know what your profile looks like and what you have on there. It's all going to be listed there. You can see the little blue edit there. You can export your profile out. But on the left hand side, you'll also see your settings, your billing information, security information, legal information, Zapier integrations. These are things that are, real, you know, are all available to you. Um, so you can drill down on any of this. Yeah, go get your billing information and print it out for tax time. <laughs> I think that's an important thing, Kathy. A lot of us forget or overlook that when we pay for solutions as part of our business, you know, speak with your, your tax advisor, but in, in most cases, this is a write-off. So uh, if you go to that billing information, Kathy, and I don't know if it'll show on this one because it's our demo account. Yeah, you will see a whole billing history on your account and you can download all of the bills from all of 2021 to submit as part of your taxes if you need to have that as part of your records. Yep. Settings, I mean, just so, there's so much stuff in it. It's kind of like the mobile app. We always say you can't break it push the buttons. Now at least you have an idea of where to find things or if they're too fine. Yeah. Um, and I think that the only other thing I can think of just off the top of my head um, is just to talk about that there is a difference under the create card button. There is. So we mentioned at the beginning that there are some things that you're going to see that are unique to your desktop that you won't have on mobile. And one of the biggest of those items is you have access to two builders. One is the mobile card builder, and really that's the primary card builder. You want to build a lot of cards in the mobile card builder from my viewpoint because you can update them on both your phone and your computer. However, sometimes we want to build more complex cards. If that's the case, maybe you want to drag and drop your layout around, do some certain things, really dial in your, your card layout to your specific uh, desires. You want to use the desktop card builder, but be aware that when you do, you will have limited edit capabilities for that card from your mobile app. It may allow you to update your name, your phone number, your email address, some of those quick contact information things, but it's not going to allow you to go in and continue building the card because you built it on the desktop builder and because the desktop builder is much more robust, if you need to edit those cards in detail, you're going to want to come back to your computer and edit them on the desktop builder. So my word of caution to everybody is if you can get away with it, build your cards on the mobile builder. Um, I, I think the mobile builder and the designs and the templates that are in there will cover a majority of, of people's needs. If you have specific needs, you know, you might want to check out the desktop builder, but understand that it requires some skill set, design skill set to use uh, to its maximum potential. Absolutely. I think that's a pretty good overview. Does anybody have I love any it. questions? Does anybody, yeah. anybody else learn anything today? 